All right, let's just open. Let's just open it up. Recording Scott. in progress. We're good to go. All right, Scott. Congratulations on a great event. Um, talk to me about that main event. I mean, where where do you think that that goes down in, in Bellator history for for moments? I mean, that that honestly was spectacular. I mean, you guys felt the energy in that room. I mean, it was electric in there, and it had it had that big big time, you know, championship fight feeling. And um, you know, AJ did his thing, man. He was impressive. I mean, I've seen Pitbull fight for many years, and, and AJ did what he had to do, took care of business, uh, and, um, you know, it's uh, won the tournament, won the million dollars. I think he's very happy right now. And I know you love talking about when you first met him, and, yeah. and you use him as a great example of your prospect development, um, but did, did that performance even surprise you a little bit with, with how quick and, and uh, dominant it was? Yeah, you know, the very beginning of that fight, I thought Pitbull was trying to lure him in and lure him in, you know, and, and just kind of lure him in to start throwing his hands and start putting some power on him. But, um, you know, I, I think that AJ completely dominated the fight, you know. And then I think, you know, pretty much he was out, and then, you know, and then he was out again. It was it seemed like that, uh, you know, he got choked out, and it was, um, you know, he just, it's, it just wasn't, it wasn't his night. You know, Pitbull's a great fighter. He's been a great champion. I mean, AJ is just, you know, uh, he's a rising star that that uh, became a big star tonight. Hey, Scott, right back here. Um, obviously, a lot of talk going into the fight was that if AJ wins, the possibility of running it back at 155 for Pitbull's title, mm -hmm. just your initial thoughts on that strategy or what you might have in mind for the future. You know, that's something that um, I know AJ has talked to to me about it. His dad has talked to me about it, and uh, but we haven't talked to Pitbull. I mean, listen, give give the cu the kid a little break. I'm talking about Pitbull. Give the, give him a little break. Let him see what he wants to do. Um, but you know, we're going to start making some calls maybe in a, in a week or so and see you know what his feeling on that is. But um, there will be a time where he's going to have to defend it. And uh, you know, I. I I, I've heard rumblings that you know AJ. This might be his last fight at 45. That he he's having a hard time making weight. So, you know, he might have to go up to 55 and and fight up there. But uh, you know, that's something that he'll have to decide. His father and his coaches will have to decide. And it's just it's just too much premature to to really determine that right now. As the promoter, how do you build on just this moment for AJ McKee? He's already been, you know, the homegrown star. Just how do you, mm -hmm. I guess, what is your part now in getting him even further out there and letting more people know just how special this kid is? I mean, I think that uh, if you look at the, the promotion behind this fight, I mean, I think that the PR team, the digital team, Showtime, everybody did, you know, all, all parts I felt were really in alignment. And they did a great job promoting this fight. And uh, I think you saw it here today. I mean, it was so nice to have fans here and to, to feel the energy. I mean, could you imagine if this fight was in a, in a no audience event, I mean, place where we had to do it? I mean, it wouldn't have been the same. And so to me, AJ had a lot of fans here. You could hear him was passionate. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it was a great, great night. The undercard felt like it was developing into Bellator Dagestan with Hassan, you know, obviously Magomed Sherpov, Usman, Islam. Just can you talk a little bit about how everyone performed? And a lot of the guys seem to be, you know, targeting that Fedor card in uh, Moscow. Just your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, we invited uh, Usman to fight in in Moscow because uh, I don't think he's injured. So I, I talked to uh, his manager before he left and, you know, we're, we're looking forward to having you fight. Again, we just want to keep him busy and keep him fighting, keep him developing. And, uh, you know, listen, the fighters from that region have proven that they are dangerous and have, you know, fought many different places and had dominance in a lot of areas. So to me, you know, it's, uh, it's something that um, we're going to find the stars that or the, the fighters that we want to build or have them compete in Bellator, and we're going to continue to fight him and I just think I think you just saw a few tonight and if you talk about the Russia card I mean I think we probably have you know 15 20 really good Russian athletes CIS territory athletes and and uh, you know they're dangerous athletes over there so you know we're working we're looking for the world's best and you know they're from that region as well and speaking of that Russian card and also you know potentially other abroad cards are you worried about the rising COVID cases and those cards actually 
happening? Is there any backup plan if, in case that doesn't happen? You know, I'll tell you, um, we are monitoring it closely, obviously. I mean, when we planned our France event, uh, Paris event last year, it, it, when we planned it, it was half capacity. We we're going to have nine, ten thousand people there, and then uh, COVID hit, started getting rising, and we started getting cut. It was down to a thousand people by the time we got there, and then the week after, there was nobody allowed to even come to the country. So, you know, we're going to be monitoring it. Hopefully, uh, like in the UK, it's fully open. I think they're eighty-five percent vaccinated in the UK. So, I uh, feel good about that event in Russia. I know they're. They're doing what they need to do, and 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 my feeling is that will be fully, uh, you know, a full a full scale event like this was, and um, you know maybe they might have some protocols with masks and things like that. But believe me, Viacom uh, is is really about protocols and making sure that all of our athletes and our staff, our production team, uh, is safe. So that's going to be the number one priority uh, moving forward. And if it changes, then we'll adapt. But right now, it's full steam ahead. Would it be possible to take that entire card if you know you can't go to Russia and bring it back to Connecticut, or is that just? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I think about if that Russia card because listen, Fedor wants to fight, and these guys want to fight, so we're going to fight them. And so, if Russia, you know, if they if they're on lockdown and and COVID starts ramping up to the point where we can't do it there, then uh, of course we would find an alternate location uh, if it was something that we felt was going to be a, a long term. Situation and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't postpone it. Uh, let's say a month or two, but you know, to me, we're gonna we're gonna fight those those guys. And you know, if Russia doesn't work out, maybe we come back to uh, New York or the Chicago area. Hey, Scott, down here to your left. Um, you watched a lot of Patricio Pitbull fights uh, in your in your career here in Bellator, and uh, he'd only been finished one time before, and it was a it was an injury against Benson Henderson in 2016. And AJ, you know, beat him in, in two minutes and, and looked dominant. I mean, wh how do you how do you put that into words exactly? It's uh, spectacular. I mean, this this kid is dynamite, and uh, I think that uh, you know I always felt even AJ in his last three or four fights, you know, I felt that he. Yeah, uh, was going to be a big star for Bellator, and for, and and he himself is recognizing how his ability has grown and who he can fight, and he's got a lot of confidence. This kid's got a lot of swagger, but I tell you, he had a lot of swagger when I met him at 17. So this is nothing for him. He's always believed in this. He's always had this as part of his destiny. Growing up in his dad's school at three or four years old, uh, you know, and and just growing up in the MMA community, this is this is nothing new for him. So. He had a spectacular showing. It's probably one of the, the greatest finishes, I think, in the, in the history of this company. And, uh, and he fought a guy that was a killer. So this is not like he's you know, fighting some guy that's just you know, a contender. I mean, he's fighting a guy that has been the champ since we signed him back in 2014. So for the last six, seven years, Pitbull's been the champ, and AG's been growing and growing and growing. This was his opportunity to shine, and he took advantage of it. Yeah, Scott, um, sorry, I don't need the microphone. Um, Scott, just carrying on from what Mark Raymondi was saying uh, about AJ, it's the people, isn't it, who decide on a star and on a champion, and we, we as you say, we've really felt it in the arena tonight. Is, is this potentially, is he potentially a catalyst for Bellator to go perhaps onto mainstream CBS to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get him on big chat shows, which we perhaps haven't had mm -hmm. so far from the well, there there is a plan in place for sure, and uh, next year we are looking to do some specials uh, with uh, you know CBS and the Parent Network. But um, you know, right now, uh, I just want to enjoy this moment and uh, and AJ enjoy this moment. But him fighting on uh, you know big CBS, I'm sure I'm sure CBS would love it. I'm sure AJ would love it. I'm sure it'd be good for everybody. So. Yeah, it's, it's possible, uh, and I'm and I'm sure that you know Showtime would love to have him fight on Showtime, and you know who knows maybe it, you know he could become uh, you know uh, a, not just a linear star but a cable star, and and then you know he could he could just you know take take it from there. I mean, pay per view is a possibility. He told me he wants to box, you know, so we'll see. I mean, you know maybe he he could fight one of the Logan Logan the Paul brothers one day. <laughs> Yeah. He's taken the first step yep, he definitely has. I mean, you saw it. I mean, the, the crowd loved him. You know, he's he's this kid is is special, and he's he's not afraid of anything, and he he rose to the occasion, and I think you're going to see that a lot in his future performances. Hey, Scott, over here. 
Mm -hmm. um, we talked a lot about AJ, and uh, you know he's just 26, mm -hmm. so he's just coming into his physical prime. What what do you see about him in terms of his growth as a fighter? And can you talk about the intangibles that he has? What what makes him unique? Uh, to handle this kind of pressure. I mean, he seemed totally at ease in this front of this crowd that expected him to win tonight. Yeah, I mean, you know, Josh, when I look at this kid, he's got striking, he's got the wrestling, he's got the jujitsu, he's got he's he's a complete fighter, and he's been that way for uh, for a beat, you know, for a while. I think for the last four, five, six fights, and so you know, he was he was ready to take this step. I think a, a little while ago, but um, you know. When, when you look at what is his weakness, you know, even I talked to his coaches before the fight, maybe a month ago, and um, they said this is going to be a tough fight because the kid has no weaknesses. Even they recognize that. Anything can happen. Pitbull is dangerous. He's got a lot of power. You know, he, he's always, you know, as far as I'm concerned, when I, when I watch his performance in the past, he's never out of a fight. I mean, this kid has dynamite in both hands and, so, and a great submission game. So, you know, when I think about, you know, AJ and, and his game, it's going to be a tough kid to beat uh, in the future, and that's this is the future of, of of MMA. A kid, you know, a kid that can do it all like this. And you know, Josh, you know, he's been doing this since he's three, four years old. He this is nothing new for him. So, you know, he he's special, and he's and his dad told me his dad told me when he came into my office, you know, five six six years ago, he said, "This is the kid. He's special. I'm telling you right now." And um, you know, he he is right. The dad the dad knew it. It's just it's just part of his destiny. One more, Casey. Hey, doing, Scott? Um, this is just a simple question, but can you confident, can confidently say, with regardless of promotion, is AJ McKee the best featherweight in the world? Yeah, I mean, I mean, listen, I would love to see him fight, you know, uh, against other people as well as you guys would. Also, it's not going to happen because it's not the UFC's business model to do it. But you tell me this kid couldn't go in there and fight anybody right now. Um, we already know; everybody knows he could do it. So. Um, if they want to get it on, then then we, we'll we'll we do it in a second. So that that's how I feel. All right, great. Thanks for the time, okay, Scott. Okay, thanks, guys.